It's been a while since the last uh, talk I did here, but uh, today I would like to go back to this project and uh, I welcome you to my art talk where I will speak today about uh, the work of art by Vasily Kandinsky. This uh, work of art uh, first uh, caught my attention at the Christie's auction house in November of 1922. And uh, it really uh, did take me a while to grasp for the essentials and uh, see the concept of this work of art. The name of the painting is uh, D. Brown. And uh, uh, today I will show you the artwork and uh, also will speak about uh, the ideas uh, which uh, I believe uh, were so, so important uh, for the artist. So Deep Brown uh, is uh, the work of art uh, created in oil on canvas in 1924. And uh, that year was uh, really important to the artist because um, uh, that was um, the period, um, 1920s, uh, uh, was the period uh, of establishing of new system of teaching art, of learning art, of creating art, and it is quite important to my mind to understand that Kandinsky was not only a painter, he was uh, a teacher, he was, uh, uh, it, he saw this as his mission to establish a new system of understanding art and of creating art. Because uh, uh, when he started uh, learning painting, uh, and he was a quiet grown-up man by then, he was in his 30s when he started uh, his learning process in Munich. And uh, he soon realized uh, that the concept of art was quite different to what he felt and what he thought important and uh, what uh, he actually saw in those works of art that impressed him in the uh, first place that brought him a, a successful lawyer to the world of painting. And uh, so he realized that he uh, has to start anew. And uh, uh, for example, when he uh, became a member of the Theosophic Society, he acquired uh, a book, uh, Forms uh, of Thought, where he found uh, the proof for his uh, inner belief that uh, painting really is about spiritual worlds and therefore painting should be abstract. And so uh, in 1908, he uh, got his uh, first understanding of how this could be changed, the whole system of seeing art and uh, teaching and learning art and producing art could be changed. And uh, so um, then he began writing his own uh, theory of art. Uh, the first book that he wrote was on spiritual in art created in 1910. And in that book, he spoke about uh, the necessity 
of finding new language, of finding new forms for painting, pure forms, pure forms that uh, really speak about the ascension to the spiritual world. And uh, so Kandinsky believed uh, that art embodies spiritual concepts, not necessarily bound to physical objects, human bodies um, are forms of the natural world. And he compared painting to music in order to make it clear that the purpose and therefore the style of art should be abstract. And uh, Deep Brown is a visual representation of Kandinsky theory. Because uh, later on, uh, when he uh, wrote the book on spiritual in art, he went back to Russia he established uh, a new art institution, a Russian Academy of Art. He was uh, the founder and the first director of it in 1914. He also taught in the Moscow State University on modern art. And uh, when he went back to Germany, he went there to establish uh, a new branch of this uh, Russian Academy of Art. But he ended up teaching in Bauhaus in Weimar. And he taught there until it was closed in 1933. He also was teaching in the United States in 1924. And uh, he exhibited Deep Brown extensively in the mid uh, 1920s and as you can see here in the 1930s because we see the slide of uh, the deep brown at the exhibition in Cleveland Museum of Art in 1937. The exhibition and the uh, actual hanging of the paintings were, was designed uh, by Kandinsky himself. And uh, so this uh, artwork may be approached as the embodiment of the theory of art that Kandinsky was creating at that time. And in 1926, he wrote another book, which is a point and line on the surface. In that book, uh, he concluded in the theoretical forms of the all the uh, principles that he actually lived through and uh, created in his uh, paintings uh, in the years uh, between 1908 and uh, uh, 1926. And later on, uh, when he continued his creative process. He didn't feel the necessity of uh, writing more tutorials uh, or works on art theory. So 1920s, the middle of 1920s was uh, the, um, the, the very um, important uh, period uh, of uh, producing all the concepts that he came to believe in. Okay, so let us uh, look at the picture and uh, ask ourselves, what do we see in the painting? Different elemental shapes are juxtaposed, aligned and contrasted against one another. Here, Kandinsky examines the interactions between a collection of angular geometric forms. In deep brown, the predominant diagonals and the use of piercing angular and intersecting geometric forms is visible. However, they are combined with several rounded and organic looking forms that appear to echo 
the artist earlier lyrical abstractions, which took their inspirations from unique rhythms of the landscapes. The sharply pointed zigzagging line recalls the schematic rendering of the uh, mountain range to the rhythmically curved elements and uh, arches that evoke clouds and rainbows and sunrises. These are characters, the mountains, the rainbows, the sunshines, these are characters of earlier landscapes created by the artist in the beginning of his creative process. But what are the themes behind all these uh, geometrical, colorful compositions? What are the meanings of these uh, colors, uh, oval forms, uh, zigzag lines, uh, this uh, attacking lines? Uh, as we see now, the deep brown and its details, it becomes more and more obvious that the conflict of dark and light is represented here. And uh, in his uh, book, Point and Line on the Surface, Kandinsky wrote about the surface of the painting as a living being approached by the viewer. So two animated beings with their soul and spirit embodied in them come in dialogue with each other. And therefore, the upper and the lower, the right and left parts of the composition are also uh, equivalents to this uh, living body that is communicating to the viewer. And the upper part of the surface, the upper part of the uh, artistic space of the composition signifies the sky. Well, and the lower part signifies the earth. And so what do we see here? First of all, we see that the dark, this deep brown of the title, comes exactly from the higher part of the composition. And this deep brown of the title is the very attacking force that is by lines, by triangular forms, by these uh, sharp angular forms to come down, come down to the lighter space of the earth, which is trying to hit back with its uh, triangular forms of the mountains, uh, the crosses, uh, the floating forms that we see here on the right. The topics which uh, used to be predominant in improvisations and compositions of Kandinsky's works in uh, 1910s were the global flood, the apocalypse, the Noah's Ark, the death and rebirth. 
he com he made a combination. He made a synthesis of uh, different biblical themes uh, on this uh, destruction of the humanity and the rebirth of it. And for instance, here in Composition 6, his work from 1913, we see this character of the Ark, which is struggling in these waters of the flood. And uh, then he goes back to this uh, topic in Composition 7, and also in this lovely Improvisation 209 from 1917. And he, we see here this uh, boat, this ship, this ark, with this character who is trying to navigate it. And this is Noah, and this is uh, Jesus Christ himself also, because uh, Kandinsky felt free to go from one part of the Bible to another to understand what was really going on, both in Russia of 1917 and in the whole world that he was living. And Kandinsky, living in those disastrous years, knew so much about the end of the world that will drown the human ship arc, and still had a persistent hope that this space boat will float and fly under the golden sail towards the new day, new planet, and new sun. When we take a look at his artworks of 1920s, from where the brown comes from, for instance, the work on the white, our good mood, uh, our black accompaniment from 1924 as well. We see how these uh, topics of, of apocalypse uh, do not go away. We see how the black, which is the color of violence, and the destruction, as well as the brown, which is according to the forms of thought that Theosophic book Kandinsky uh, did come from. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, egoism that lead uh, the humanity to this uh, catastrophe. All these colors of anger, and uh, uh, violence really come as uh, uh, symbols uh, of eclipse. Eclipse that uh, make the light go away from the human world. So this attack of the blackness that disturbs the colorful world, um, but also makes it uh, start the process of rebirth, of this finding new forms uh, and new language. And so the visual concepts of the work of art, D. Brown, that it uh, successfully represents are apocalyptic vision of the end of the world, fight between light and darkness, war and peace, forces of the world, collapse and destruction, destruction and reconstruction, the sense of darkness on earth, disembodiment of things, eclipse, last judgment, last days of the prior world, these are what we see here. These are visual forms of spiritual experience. The soul is going through in those times when the artist lived and in our days and in all the times of the humanity. 
These are not direct visualization of the certain texts of the Bible, but the vision of the spiritual transformation the humanity is going through in Vasily Kandinsky times uh, and in the end of times. This is the visual form of thought, feeling, and premonition. So these are the concepts behind uh, Deep Brown and also all the paintings uh, of Vasily Kandinsky from those years, from 1910s, uh, 1920s. I was really happy uh, to share my thoughts, my ideas uh, about uh, these uh, paintings with you today. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my talk. And I hope to share with you uh, my thoughts on other encounters with different works of art here in this uh, series of my art talks. Thank you very much. See you soon.